You got a question today for us, Will. Yep. Oh, if you want to send your question, will at lulater.com. What do you got? So uh, questions for Lou Later, China and U.S. relationship. This is from TC. Uh, first of all, I love your show. My question is, what will America be without China? And what will China be without America? Much love from Taiwan. Oof. Of course, it comes from Taiwan as well, right? In the yeah. middle of the whole situation. Mm. Geographically sitting between and then also from an industrial standpoint. Uh, you know what? I think they're going to get it sorted out. I think they're going to get it. So I think that, I know that's crazy, but business, man, is business. Yeah, just give them another G20 meeting. It's just like it, it doesn't it doesn't work out eventually. It doesn't work out like splitting the whole thing up. All of this is tactics. It's all te temporary negotiation measures. I, I guess there's a possibility you can you can end up in a permanent lock. But if I had a bet right now, I'm not betting on. A, I, I wouldn't bet on a permanent lock, just because there's too much too much immediate and long term downside for the parties involved, particularly China. I would say, uh, America without China is pretty much what we talked about early in the episode. It's manufacturers you moving their products destined for the U.S. to places near China. That's what it looks like and and is like in the immediate sense. Vietnam, Taiwan, another one, this question coming from Taiwan. So do you think Americans really care if their product is stamped with China or Taiwan or Thailand or Malaysia, Indonesia, Vietnam? Like, I think what's happened in re re more recent history here is that those other countries surrounding China have adopted some of the manufacturing prowess that exists in China which is part of the reason why these manufacturers can, can quickly move operations to those places. At least that's what the news seems to suggest at this moment in time. And it's everything. I mean, we reported on the, the bike, that bike company moving production from China to Taiwan. And then you have game consoles going to Vietnam and wherever else, as we talked about in this episode. So I don't think this is going to stop any products from reaching the U.S. The cu customers, people holding the money, get the services. They get the goods. Eventually, the goods find the money. On the flip side, we've seen how some of the China without America uh, situation has impacted certain companies like Huawei, uh, where it, it just it, it made things super complicated almost immediately. Now, granted, the same thing exists for China that exists for America in the sense that a lot of the products that would be imported, they can get from elsewhere, a lot of them. The intellectual property stuff, the blueprints, the patents, and the chip designs and stuff, those are more complicated. But we live in Canada, and they stopped importing, what, was it pork or chicken or beef? I don't know. Yeah, some sort of meat. Some sort of meat. They're just like, okay, we're done with that because of the, again, relating to the Huawei beef. <laughs> beef? Yeah. You see that? With the uh, CFO of the company who's detained currently on behalf of Trump. It's also complicated. But... The world is, uh, is, is massive in this department. In terms of like where to get your things, the world is massive. And both countries will find ways in the interim around a relationship, around having to have a relationship. But long term, these two GDPs, these two populations are so massive that they're... they're is tremendous benefit that could be had if you can find common ground. Tremendous benefit for all involved to have m more people contributing and participating, cooperating and so forth. So that's the ideal scenario. That said, my uh, experience in this department is limited as far as like what it is that's holding them apart and whether or not the ideological bridges can be, get, can be uh, whether they can span those. Yeah. Because you hear people in the Defense Department in the U.S. that are like, look, they, it has to be a more democratic place. There has to be some kind of election. It has to be, map more accordingly to what we're aware of in order for, for example, for us to consider allowing Huawei into our marketplace from a, from a telco perspective. You, you see this type of conversation happening. 
and they can they can solve that problem by going to these these uh, countries that are nearby almost instantly i think i think it's two things that could happen they could remain in gridlock they could remain within their own independent ideologies china could loosen up or the u.s could loosen up hmm. i don't see the u.s loosening up not with the current leader <laughs> but hey it's possible we'll see what happens i mean it's this look this question is above my pay grade obviously <laughs> but it's very interesting to me nonetheless yep. like it's very interesting to me i read about this almost every day it's a curious thought. I mean, I just remember my own history, uh, like my own life. I know my own life, Will. Oh, okay. You might be surprised by that. Oh. And, uh, you know, my childhood, speaking specifically to, to uh, TC here, or Chun from Taiwan, I had a lot of products made in Taiwan as a kid that were all my toys. Oh. I, I had cars and, like, a lot of stuff came from Taiwan and then and Japan bef as well before that. And it wasn't up until recently that China really started to dominate. And I'm 30, I was born in 1985, I'm 34. And so, I be, you know, you can imagine people even older than me that can remember stuff coming from elsewhere. Uh -huh. the, 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 the global source for products has moved around over time in the manufacturing department. It has moved around, it can move around. I think that's the story here. It can move around. It doesn't have to be China. Uh, that said, I've been to China. I've been to manufacturing facilities, and I have an appreciation for, for what comes out of there and, and, and the fact that many of the innovations and products that end up in my pocket, that that's their origin currently, and I like those products. So time will tell how well these other countries can truly step in. And uh, I know Samsung, another one, manufacturing in Vietnam. So I have to assume it... Uh, as far as our products are concerned, it might be business as usual. We'll see, Will.